In this episode, Focus gets a clay bar and a polish. We wrestle with some AC pipes. Ooh, yeah. Manifold and cat come off in the dark. Front subframe and goodies are back from the powder coaters and looking amazing. And I find a small rust hole. Okay, let's sort the paintwork out before I start putting the cover over this car ready for the winter. So I've got an Auto Glim bodywork shampoo conditioner, pure definition clay bar, and an Auto Glim super resin polish. Okay, this is hot water from the hose. So I'm one of those weird people that has a hot outside tap on my house. So uh, yeah, just give this a rinse with hot water, loosen all the gritty bits. Okay. Auto Glim and a wash mitt. Yeah, I'm not cool enough to be a detailer, so uh, yeah, we only do what we can do. Rinse the mitt. And just try not to scratch it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we're going to sort this one out as well. Probably I'm going to change the whole mirror, I think. So, uh, yeah, I need to find a, a mirror in the same colour. Or we'll get it sprayed when we get the wing sprayed. Who knows? Who can tell what the future holds? I did just do this the other day when I bought the car cover. I gave it a very quick wash just to test the cover. So it is mostly clean at the moment. There's no harm in doing it again, though. Let's give it a very quick wipe down. So when I do this with a cloth, it actually feels gritty. I mean, this isn't the right cloth. This is just a cheapy microfiber, but uh, I can actually feel the grit on this. So it definitely does need to be clay barred. Okay, get the clay bar, and we just tear off a little chunk and just warm that up. And get the detailing spray, or in this case, we're going to call it clay bar spray because we are clay bar in. And spray this on nice and liberally. Oop, got a decent jet there. Ah, that's more like it. There we go. Lots of spray, work in a small area, and then with no pressure, I'm just going to take this very lightly. Just go side to side or up and down. Run it over the section that I'm working on and I can feel the grit now being taken into the clay. So yeah, not too much pressure. Okay, wipe it off. It's not really that hot today, so I just went over the whole bonnet, but um, probably many do like a smaller section, but um, not today. And yeah, that feels really smooth already, actually. Really works well. Can't feel any grit now. That was only a quick go, and it looks amazing. It's really good. There's no gritty noise on that at all it's really smooth and uh, yeah really happy with that so I'm gonna push on and go over the whole car and um, then we're gonna get a coat of wax on but considering that's got no wax no no nothing on it it's um, yeah it really is lovely I mean there's the odd imperfection where a stone has chipped it but yeah that has um, come out really well I'd um, I'd recommend doing that
Okay, have a listen to this. So this side is done. This side isn't. Clay bar. Perfect. Okay, that's a whole car clay bar. It's come out really well. Nice smooth panels now. It's taken all that grittiness off the top of it. Really, really nice finish, done a very good job. So what I'm going to do now is go through this and put on the Auto Glim Super Resin Polish. So I've got some here and it's basically the um, best stuff I've ever used. It um, goes on really well. You can put it on either one panel or the whole car, wipes off really easily and gives a really nice finish. Okay, Super Resin Polish. I'm going to go over the whole bonnet. So the reason that I didn't go for the Auto Glim clay bar kit was it was 30 quid and it had this polish in which I didn't need because I already had this one. Then I had a look online and um, the other brand did one that was only 8 quid and it had the detailer and the clay bar. It was just better value and uh, that's the one I went for. Well, I've never used pure definition stuff before but I highly recommend it. Yeah, this auto glim stuff, it smells really nice as well. It reminds me of, uh, you know, college days, cleaning your motor and go taking it around town. Happy days. Okay, I'm just going to do the whole car. I'm going to move on to the roof now. Okay, do the roof. That squeaking is the car, not my hip. Although at the age of 40, what? 21, you never quite know. <laughs> oh, God almighty, John. Like, uh, be cool with the clutch, man. Okay, that's all the panels done with the polish. It's gone on really well, it's dried okay. I'm just gonna go around the whole car now and wipe it off. So this comes off really easily, it's lovely stuff. Really light. And you see the finish on that there, it's a really, really nice finish. Polish the top. There it is, lovely finish, all ready for the winter. I know that I can put the car cover on it now and I've done all I can to minimize any scratches. Okay, the tool has turned up to get the air conditioning pipes off, so I had a recommendation for these. It'll be a little bit easier than trying to use the hose clips, so I'm gonna take whichever one fits, and then we're gonna reach behind here, undo the pipes, and then I can take all of these pipes out down here, take those out and take the dryer out as well, then we can change all that lot. Okay, let's try this one. So yeah, that just hooks over the pipe and then we can just push that in there and that should unclip it. Hopefully with less of a struggle, let's see. Okay, that's around the pipe. There's just no access to, oh, hold on. I think it might be the next size down actually. All right, let's try the second one from the largest. Right, this is a real bastard to do. If you're thinking of doing this, my advice would be don't. You just can't grip the connector. There's just no space. 
and you've got all the vacuum pipes here all getting knocked around and you know, that'll be fun checking all those <laughs> that is so difficult i've got to get these off because those pipes are corroded so they have to come off mm. can't leave them on but i know it's only just if i can just get them off because when i put them back on they just slot on there's no pissing around <laughs> i think Sugar. Two lumps of sugar. What was that? Ah, there we go. Bits of car sprinkled liberally all over the driveway. Right. Where was I? Ah, yes. <laughs> Man versus old Ford. This is such a pain, but I really want the air conditioning working because we're going to do some miles in this car when it's done. Going to do as many miles as possible. Right, let's try the other pipe, see if we get any more luck. I do think the right hand side pipe is going to have to come off first because that's sort of blocking the left hand side, the driver's side pipe. But it's resisting like a bastard it just does not want to come off but it's gonna i know what it is it's that bloody spring inside is uh it's just been in there for a long time and the tool won't quite free it off one of them is off oh my god thank you car jesus yes right God almighty, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we got. One of those, and then the tool we need is uh, the second to the largest one on here. So yeah, we just do the same on the other side now. Yeah, we've got better access now because this one is disconnected. And now I know that it can come off. You got, it sort of gives you more confidence to, you know, take the other one off really. Yeah, it's certainly a bit more room now. And I know that that attachment is the right size now, so there's no doubt, so I'll just press on until this comes off. <laughs> All the old electrics down here, I don't like doing this kind of job near to so many old electrics because the last thing 20 year old connectors like is people wiggling them. Come on. Check it out. When you take off the rear gearbox mount, that's all you got. So the rear gearbox mount is uh, pretty critical. Oh, Jesus. Honestly, what a job. Gonna have a lot of editing to do with this. Honestly, it's been rolling for about an hour. <laughs> Come on, focus. They are so easy to do, but so difficult. All at the same time. I can see why they get left. But honestly, it's, it's right there. I can just feel the gap where the connector needs to go into and it's the spring is just not moving. That's all it is. And all of a sudden it will just go. Do you hear that focus? All of a sudden it will just go. No. What a bastard. I want this off. That's really on there. How the fridge is that on there so tight? It's absolutely welded on there, that is. That's that bloody spring is just not moving. Oh, oh God. 
Okay, it's getting dark. I'm running out of battery. I might have to pick this up again tomorrow. It's literally one is stuck and that is it. I know it's the right size connector. I know, I know it will come off. I've sort of got access to it now because the other pipe's out, but it just won't go in there and I just can't grip it enough to actually get the force on that to move the spring. I think the spring is just um, resisting. What a bastard. Okay, we're gonna do this tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day and uh, I did actually get this off. So um, yeah, what happened? <laughs> okay, what happened is you actually need to use the third one down here. So I tried this one. I was using this one yesterday. You need the third one down. And um, I thought it was too small to actually go on there. But what I did, I tried it on this one and I, the one that I had off. And I noticed that it was a really nice fit on the spring. You see that spring in there? That's what you had to slot in between. And um, I tried it on the other one. And after a little bit of uh, movement, it did come off. And all it was was that I was using yeah, one of these that was um, still slightly too big. So uh, <laughs> there you go, guys. You know, I hope it helps someone out and uh, I'll waste my afternoon, guys. So you don't have to waste yours. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do now is pull these two pipes out and um, these should actually just come out from here. So I'm gonna put you back on the tripod and we'll finally get these removed. Yeah, if I struggle with something like this, I'm gonna leave it in because um, it's real life and uh, you know I'm not a bullshitter and basically um, yeah you're gonna you're gonna see if I have a problem with something because it would have been very handy to um, to have known that before I started on this so uh, yeah hopefully it will help someone out here we go off they come easy as that yeah okay pipe number one is free and the legendary pipe number two is also now free. Yay! <laughs> okay, here we go. We've got most of the air conditioning system off. So these are the bits I was struggling with. So these bits go straight through the bulkhead behind the dash. And then, um, yeah, we've got the two pipes come down here. We've got some sort of connector here, which was, um, yeah, that's, again, that's in the engine bay. This is the reason that I would like to have changed these because there is a lot of corrosion there. And um, I mean, they, they are probably still holding, but I do want to take them off. And then we go through here to the dryer. And then, um, yeah, this bit here goes to the compressor. We're going to be changing the compressor and um, yeah, we have other, other bits and bobs there. So basically what I'm looking for is the whole system there. And um, to be fair, I can't actually see them. So I'm going to have to track them down. Maybe have to go to Ford, but um, yeah, I did sort of consider with this as I'm going so far, rebuilding this car that I will actually um, change that whole system. Okay, it's time to take off the manifold. I wanna do this for a couple of reasons. First one, I need to get to the oil separator behind here, so that needs to come off. You can only really do that with the manifold off. And secondly, I wanna change the catalytic converter. So uh, what I need to do is undo the nuts and bolts on the flexi section that connected to the cat, and then that whole lot will be free. And uh, obviously make sure that the bracket is undone too. And then I'm going to take off the manifold on the cat as one unit. And then when it's off, I'll put it on the table. I'll get the Dremel and I will separate them there. I'll obviously uh, don't want to damage the manifold there. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan with that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Son. <laughs> OK, here it is. Yeah, so the first evening episode. So, uh, yeah, going to probably see a few more of these as we come into the winter. So I hope it all comes out all right. So we've got these... Um, LEDs on here and then the other ones at the back for a little bit of colour there. So uh, yeah, I'm lucky I'm, uh, I'm in the building business and I've got a few of these uh, sight lights knocking around. So uh, most people call them sight lights. I call them movie lights because I think that sounds cooler. So uh, <laughs> let's crack on with this and see what happens. So yeah, as I just mentioned, I'm gonna be taking off the manifold and taking off the cat as well, leaving it all connected because um, I don't wanna be drilling through this at night. I'll, I'll put this on the bench and then um, sort of take that off there because I don't want to damage the manifold. So first thing I'm going to do is crawl under here and take off the flexi section and the catalytic converter bracket. Okay, so let's undo the flexi section to cat there. So 15 mil spanner. 
and I've already changed these so they're nice and loose and I, uh, I did a bit of copper grease as well because I had a feeling that I'd be uh, the one to take them off. And what I'm going to do as well is just undo the ones at the back here so I'll take these out, these nuts and bolts and then I'll actually take off this section. Just get the spanner on the nut behind that to stop it from spinning. Okay, take out the last bolt. And then take out the flexi section. Undo the cap bracket. So there is a clamp that goes around the cap here and then it goes onto this bracket here, which in turn connects to this, which is bolted onto the block. So basically I want to undo this bolt here and the bolt behind it. These are apparently really hard to get hold of. So I'm going to try and take this one off and basically recondition it. And uh, yeah, get that all sorted out before it goes back on. Okay, that's not too bad. That's a 10 mil. That's what we got. Then just sort of reach over as best you can and do the same from the other side. Okay, so that's the other side done. So I went for the next size up ratchet for this just to get a better uh, angle on this. That's the cap bracket bolts out. Yeah, so now the cat will come out with the manifold attached to it with its little bracket on there, but this piece will stay on so I can uh, recondition all that. I'm going to take out the oxygen sensors now. Get the special sockets. Put it over the sensor, so it's got a little cut in the side there, just goes down there and uh, it's on the top. So uh, yeah, that is uh, so much easier than the last time I did this. Put the ratchet on the top and undo the sensor. Take the ratchet out, probably take that off as well actually. Yeah, they never come out this easily, it's only because I have just changed these and I've not driven the car anywhere. Then a different socket for the back one. Same as before, just thread it through the wire, take it down onto the sensor. Put the ratchet in the top and then undo it. There we go, that's loose. Just got to undo the top as well to make sure this doesn't get too twisted. This one is loose enough. Okay, coil that up there. They don't like to be bumped around these things, so uh, yeah, I'll just try and hang that up there out of the way. Okay, what we've got here is a uh, ST170 specific over 20 year old exhaust manifold that uh, looks like it hasn't been off so I'm going to be as gentle as I possibly can with this and uh, just see if I can actually undo some of these bolts here and just take it really easy and see what happens. I really don't want to be breaking this. Okay, 10 mil socket. I'm going to start with this one and then sort of zigzag across there. I don't think there is any special way to undo this but um, you, know, you never know. So let's get this one out. Be as delicate as possible with them. That comes undone. That's a good sign. It wasn't too tight actually either. So I'll just move across to one of these. Yeah, these aren't too tight at all actually. Yeah, so these are different down here. You've got something different on there and down there. So I'll just undo the ones that this 10 mil will do. Okay. Yeah, they're coming out fine. You never know with things like this. Okay, I think that was the last of the 10 mils. So let's just undo the other ones now as well. Okay, this end one down here seems to be a sort of um, bolt with a nut around it, 13 mil. I don't know whether this has actually been off. It's not very tight, so I don't know whether it's somebody's had this off and then has bodged it back on, or I don't know whether it's a standard thing. Really don't know, but um, it's coming undone okay, so yeah, I'm happy that one will come out okay. And then there's one more here as well, right on the end. So that's a 13.2, just undo this one with a deep socket. Again, I'm not sure whether this is standard or it's something else, but um, yeah, it comes undone okay. Right, so now I know that they all come undone, I'm just going to take them all out now.
Hmm. That's the end one. What do you think? Okay, so now we've only got one bolt in there and then the manifold will drop down. So let's get this one out. And just support the manifold. It should still be slightly hooked on the back with the cap bracket, so we'll see what happens. Okay. I just thought, is that gonna make it over the dipstick? <laughs> it's probably not actually. Let's leave that last bolt in for now loosely and take the dipstick off. <laughs> okay, so the dipstick, just one screw at the top and then it just pulls out. So let's support the manifold and get the last 10 mil out now. Just need to get under that and just unhook whatever the cat is caught on. So it is actually slightly caught on the other half of its bracket, so probably the easier way would have been to take off the entire bracket, but it looked a bit corroded. I reckon we could still get it off this way though. Here we go. There it is. Lovely. Right, so first things first, if you're gonna do this, I would probably take off more of that cap bracket. My one, you know, the same as the Ola, is very old. I think wiggling it, it's basically broken off the end. So what we have here is this bit needs to be on there. That's the bit that I took the bolts out from. Yeah, being rough with it has broken it. I do know these are very hard to find. So uh, yeah, the hunt is gonna start now, ready for when I get the new one, or I'm gonna make another one there. So uh, yeah, that is a bit of a pain, but realistically it shouldn't have broken that easy anyway. So uh, probably would be time to change that. So. Yeah, that's off. So next time I'll probably actually undo the whole lot. And this is what we got, ST170 with its exhaust manifold removed. So I'm going to unbolt this. It looks like a couple of bolts down there or two or three bolts. Going to get this off and either refurbish it or change that. And then, yeah, we can see inside the um, sort of workings of it there. So, yeah, it all looks, uh, you know, as I would expect it to look. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to um, sort of have a look at these. I mean, all of these look OK. Uh, so these are all the threads are fine on these and you know they all they seem to be absolutely fine with no damage at all and um, yeah I just wonder what you guys think with regard to these here so um, we obviously have uh, sort of different bolts here so these uh, you know doesn't look um, the same as the others looks a bit different and then we've got some um, you know sort of standard 10 mils there so yeah I wonder if you guys could let me know in the comments your, your thoughts on it and uh, you know is that standard has that been where somebody's got around a problem they're all you know they weren't done up massively tight and um, yeah, just wondering what your thoughts are on that. All right, let's take off that oil separator. Actually, before I do that, the cap bracket has just uh, caught my attention. So it looks like that wasn't broken just now because the, the break in that is actually very old. It has uh, sort of re-corroded over there. So it looks like with this car, it's been running with a broken cap bracket for a long time. And um, yeah, I never, I never noticed it. So yeah, we do need to get another one of those. So. Uh, I'm putting the shout out if anybody, uh, if anybody knows where to get these from. They do appear to be nearly impossible to find. If I can't find one, I'm going to have to actually fabricate one or have one fabricated and uh, get running that way because, um, yeah, it obviously was running with a broken bracket. And, um, yeah, so I never noticed it, but apparently, I've, I've never seen it, but apparently what it can do is break the cat if you uh, sort of run without these. It can break the, break the top of the cat. So um, when I get a new cat, I need to make sure that that bracket is on there and working properly. Okay, as far as I can see at the moment, it's got three 8 mil bolts there. What I've done as well, I put a, just a bit of tissue over the oil uh, dipstick hole there. I don't want to get anything in there. I am going to be obviously completely changing the oil and I will be having this sump off just to redo that gasket on there as well, just while I've got good access while the cat's off. So yeah, let's get these out. Yeah, so these seem to be the shorter bolts and this is the longer one that has to go through the separator. Put the bolts back in for safekeeping. So that's it, oil separator off and we can see right into the bottom of the engine there. Check it out. 
So we put something over that to make sure nothing dodgy gets in there. And down here we have the oil separator. So uh, yeah, the back is in very good condition. And uh, yeah, that just sticks in there. And then the front has obviously been scorched by the manifold heat. So I don't know whether I can recondition that or whether I'll get a new one. I did have a great tip the other day from uh, somebody that recommended one for sale and uh, I hadn't got this off yet. So uh, yeah, I may have to try and find another one there. But um, yeah, I would like to replace that if possible. Okay, that's enough for tonight. Tidy up time now and a glass of a refreshment. So uh, yeah, let's get that on the go. And then I will see you guys back in the daylight, depending on how the edit goes. Okay, let's get these in the van, take them down to the powder coaters. So we've got the little shield there that goes over the electrics in the front passenger wheel arch, just behind the liner. We've got the front subframe, front anti-roll bar and the radiator bracket. Okay, just got the front subframe and the other bits back for the powder coaters, so let's open them up, see what we got. So this has been blasted and then zinc treated and powder coated. Oh yeah, it looks great. Oh yeah, great job. Yeah, he's done a perfect job on that. That is absolutely amazing. Considering how rough it looked. Yeah, lovely, let's turn it over. Yes, yeah, basically like new, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's gone to every, every bit, it's all been covered. Yeah, lovely. Let's get the other bits opened. Okay, this is the radiator bracket. Cool, look at that. Be ashamed to put it on the car. I might just hang this on my wall. Actually, it's incredible. Yeah, all the little numbers have come up and everything. It's um, yeah, that is a fantastic job. That is really good. It's cleaned up really well. The finish is absolutely immaculate. Brilliant finish there. Okay, and this is the cover for the electric terminals underneath the passenger wheel arch there and this was in very bad condition but yeah that, uh, that looks incredible yeah really really nice really thick finish on there it's gonna look great back on the car Here it is, if you want this done to yours, the guy to see is a guy called James at GSL Powder Coatings in Ingerston. He's done an absolutely top job. Looks really, really good. Proper thick finish on there, cleaned it up really well. And uh, yeah, absolutely perfect finish on this. So yeah, I can't wait to get it back on the car. Okay, here it is, the bit with the rust. So I was looking for problems in this car and uh, yeah, the problems came and found me. So there was actually no sign this was here at all and um, all I was doing, I was picking away at the grit guard here and uh, just making sure and um, yeah, so absolutely no sign whatsoever and then the screwdriver went through that, so I picked it out and um, that's what we got there. So what I'm going to do with this is um, my welding isn't up to repair in this, so we're going to cut this out with the Dremel. This one down here, got a little flexible um, sort of hose I suppose for that, so we can cut it out and then I'm going to take this car when it's time to have it MOT, present it uh, to the MOT station and obviously get the welding done by the MOT guy 
and um, that's the way we're going to do this. So um, yeah, there is a time-lapse video actually of when I first discovered this. Let me see if I can add that in. The dog's are looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is scrape away the rest of this gravel guard just to make sure that there's no other underlying issues before I start chopping big pieces out of this car. Okay, let's scrape the last of this coating off. Well, it may well be solid under here, but I do need to check because I thought that bit was solid and uh, yeah, look at that turned out. Yeah, we're just going to tap it with a hammer just to make life a bit easier. That looks all right, it might just be on the back, but you never know. Okay, there we go. So yeah, the rest of the seal is absolutely fine. I've given it a good tap over with the chisel and the screwdriver and there is no problems with that bit at all. So we are just dealing with an isolated section at the back here. So what I'm gonna do with the Dremel, I'm gonna cut this out back to clean. So I cut a big square out, cut anything that's uh, rusty out. And then I'm going to also, there's a weak bit here. I'm gonna cut this one out as well. So I'm gonna do it as delicately as possible so that when I do take off the MOT, it is literally a case of, yeah, just, uh, you know, weld over the hole. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out with the Dremel. I found this one in Screwfix for about 70 quid, came with a pack of bits as well. So uh, yeah, a little bit more delicate than the uh, Makita grinder. So we'll see how it goes with this one. Oh, it does snap around though, so be careful. Okay, so that's the first rough cut done there. I appreciate it's slightly difficult to see from the angle of the tripod, so I'll just give you the tour here. So, uh, yeah, just little by little, just um, taking off a little bit and just sort of seeing how sound it is. So this is going to be tidied up. I'm going to take off a bit more down the back there and just sort of, um, you know, take it take it slowly and see what happens. I need to get the uh, bit of fear, actually, there's two layers there. So the first layer needs to come off back to uh, solid metal. And then I'm going to take out this section here. So just, uh, you know, sort of make a little cut around that and then probably take off this bit at the bottom here. Just, uh, you know, try and make it as tidy as possible. I just check the inside of the car isn't on fire. If you see my welding video, you'll know exactly what I mean. No, we're good. Yes, yeah, so I've just cut around the weak spot there and I've also tried to just sort of score over where the metal overlaps there. So what I'm hoping is I'll be able to sort of pull this out and then um, I need to get this first strip off as well there. So yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, let's just see if that wants to come out. Yes, that is pretty corroded. Yeah, what I'm going to do is um, run the Dremel along there and then pick out this uh, just probably with the chisel and the hammer. Well, actually, do I need to? What I might just do actually is, um, yeah, probably get the hammer, hammer and chisel in there, take that off without having to saw that separate piece off. Yeah, it just comes off. Okay, there we go. 
Yeah, there we go. So that came off perfectly there. So all I did with that is just put the um, screwdriver or put the chisel in between this and just hammered it and it basically separated. So now there's a nice section out there that the uh, MOT guy can weld over there. So inside is actually okay. That is mainly surface. That's not, you know, nothing's going to go through that. That is fairly solid. So I am going to clean that up and then put the rust killer on that. But I'm not going to go too crazy with cleaning up everywhere that he needs to weld because uh, the car will be sitting out there out here over the winter and obviously you know it's uh, not ready to be welded yet so before it goes in I will sort of clean up all the edge so um, it can get a good weld there and then what I'm going to do now is do what I just did to this bit here so take this piece out all down that seam there and then um, cut out a little bit more at the back there and then we can just work on getting these edges a lot more smoother and uh, checking inside but as far as I can tell a lot of that is just um, on the side it's surface there is a, a chunk here missing actually what's that something else has fallen down there yeah so this bit i need to just basically find out where that goes it may it may have been connected it may not have been so uh yeah just going around the edge again got my money's worth out of that Yeah, see the base of that is just peeling away there. take this bit out as well okay got a bit more out this is mostly okay there is a slight um, little hole in there so what I'll do is when I have this done I'll clean it up I'll get a little uh, patch or something done with that or um, you know take the uh, MOT testers advice there and uh, I think what I'm gonna do with this is this is a little bit weak as well I obviously don't want to go too crazy but I am actually gonna you know chop that little bit out there too just to you know tidy up this bit as well i might as well while i'm doing it then this bit has already had a previous repair when i was running the car i did have that repaired um previously there so uh, yeah let's change that dremel disc and uh, just cut this last bit out then we can have a, a good look at um this bit inside here which is uh, a little bit corroded That's no bloody good, is it, Dremel? Not impressed. Mm. Yeah, so I'll get another pack of discs with that, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take out that last section there and then have a bit of a clean up and just um, check underneath it. And this bit, it's a, bit, a little bit rough, but I will um, run down that again, get a nice neat line down there. And then the plan is to leave everything pretty much as it is over the winter and then before it goes in for the MOT it will be properly cleaned up and then um, yeah it will provide a decent surface for the MOT tester to weld that so uh, yeah I'm gonna get some more discs and uh, carry on with that. Okay I'm gonna wrap it up there for today so I need to get some more Dremel discs so I need to basically go up to the retail park and um, mess around up there trying to find those so uh, yeah all I'm gonna do really is just tidy up the last of that rust hole all looks okay it's pretty much as as i expected so a little bit rusty inside but what i'm going to do is basically just tidy up the last little bit i was working on and then leave it until next year when we're ready to get the mot when it's mot time i'll basically treat the rust and you know make sure everything's prepped up ready for the welding i'm going to do the same on the other side peel off that um protective layer and just have a look and uh you know if, if there is any similar issues then i'll do the same thing i'm doing on this side obviously if, if it's horrific i'll get the camera out and we'll, we'll have a look at it but um yeah i'm gonna you know trying to find the steering rack now so I'm probably gonna have my steering rack rebuilt um, so I can sort of keep the original part on there and then I could put that back on the front subframe, get the front subframe back on. So I'm just talking to a couple of suppliers at the moment trying to sort out a price for it. So uh, as soon as that's done, we'll get the um, get that back on film and uh, yeah, start to get a few more bits back on this car. So there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next one.